Okay, team. Welcome to a new version of our lectures, which are is going to be uh, a lab portion. I'm going to start talking today about um, one rep max and the importance of one rep max. And as a scientist and an exercise physiologist and a trainer and a consultant and as a nutritionist and as a physical therapist and as an occupational therapist, why it is important for us to do a one rep max to understand maximum force production and then also why it's important to understand mass maximum force production and where we max out at so we can develop a um, endurance regiment or endurance programming for specific type of athletes or people recovering or people just wanting to exercise in a fair weather type fashion. So uh, we're going to talk about this today and ignore this right here because I'm, I'm moving some things around in the syllabus. And uh, first and foremost, I'm incredibly sorry about the confusion that uh, I probably have caused with the discussion board. Um, I realized there might have been some mislabeling, um, not necessarily mislabeling, but I'm identifying one discussion as something and uh, you guys are perceiving it as something else. So there's a disconnect in there and it's entirely my fault. Um, I do apologize because this has been incredibly difficult trying to manage these courses and the students and everything via online. So sometimes the wires are getting crossed. So in order to better help you with this week's discussion, um, I'm going to provide you a video and walk you through some of the things uh, that I expect from you so it helps kind of clarify some information. Now, this um, particular discussion will be due next Wednesday, okay? So usually I give you guys Tuesday to Tuesday, but I'm opening this on Wednesday, so it's due next Wednesday. A couple of quick things to understand is that you do not have to respond to somebody on this particular discussion question. You only have to write one well-thought-out, well-designed response to my questions. There's a reason for this. Um, I On this particular discussion question, I am going to gauge your writing capacity and your ability to say what you mean and mean what you say and speak scientifically so that when I received your exams, um, I have a fingerprint of how you write. Um, and your exams are coming up uh, next Friday. So it's important for me to understand how you write um, so that I understand your thought process and how to grade everybody individually. But more importantly, uh, I got to make sure that nobody is copying and pasting anything since we're living in a virtual world with these courses. I need to make sure that all the work being submitted to me is original. And um, this is just one small way that I cross-reference that amongst many other ways. Um, so... If you're not a good writer, it's okay. Give me what you got. Let me see how you write. So when I approach the exam, I have a couple of samples from you. That's why we do discussion questions. Uh, not only is it important for the information, but it's important to get you to write about it. Because even though you may understand it, you may not know how to regurgitate it. And that's the business we're in. If you're talking to a team, if you're talking to an athlete, if you're talking to other coaches, if you're working in a research hospital and you got to speak to an MD, you got to speak the ling lingo and you have to be able to write the lingo. So that is why we are doing this. So um, let's get into one rep max. Let's talk a bit about strength and endurance. Okay. So muscular strength, which we're talking about today is the ability to exert maximal force. Okay. So that is maximal contraction. That is having the capacity to put up as much weight as possible in a single effort, which therefore demonstrates, uh, where you are on the strength continuum. And based upon that information that we obtain, we can design a whole bunch of different training regiments around understanding your one rep max. So uh, obviously, if we're talking about strength and we're talking about the ability of maximal force production, generally one time, then when we get into endurance, we're talking about the opposite end of the spectrum, which is to um, get somebody to have contractions for a longer period of time. Uh, without fatigue, but you know when we get when we train muscle endurance, the only way we are going to increase endurance is by maxing out endurance. So we want to encourage fatigue, and we want to be able to um, basically track fatigue points, and then through training get them to surpass those fatigue points. So what I have over here 
is a rep continuum, right? So when we are dealing with reps and sets and information like that, we have two polar opposites. So we have the heavy, heavy strength guys here, right? So if you do two reps, you're working on primarily strength. Not only are you working on strength, but you're operating in a certain metabolic pathway, which by now you guys should be familiar with. This would be that ATP and that ATP phosphocreatine system, right? Now, if we just do two, that's probably most of that ATP pool. If we get further away from two and kind of get into the six rep range, well, now we're digging into that ATP and there's the crossover right here into that PC phosphocreatine system, right? You guys are aware of that now. Also on the other end of the spectrum, we have this endurance range, right? Which is 15 plus. Um, generally, you could go from 15 to 20,000, right? Depends on how uh, endur how conditioned you are, endurance. And then we have this happy range here, which is between 6 and 12 reps, right? So on this end of the spectrum over here, when we have 15 reps, obviously, um, if, if you guys were to close your eyes and think about doing a bench press 15 times, you're going to start developing something, right? And that something is going to start to burn, and you guys are aware of this because we just talked about it, that lactic acid, right? Or, or that lactate with the free-flowing hydrogen ions that are in the cell, right? That is what is causing the burning. So if we're doing this 15 plus rep range here, and I were to ask you what fuel we are using, you should say, oh, that makes sense. Um, if there's lactate being generated, then we are in glycolysis anaerobically. So we're taking in sugar, we're running it through glycolysis and we're creating pyruvate and that pyruvate is being converted into uh, lactic acid or lactate and hydrogen, right? And that's what's causing the burning. So we can see over here, we're dealing with that anaerobic glycolysis rep range, right? So here is the ATP, here is the ATP PC. And then when we get into here and here, we start getting into that anaerobic glycolysis. Now, if I did five more, if we did 20, well, obviously they're going to be slowing down and we're probably going to be moving into that aerobic glycolysis with just a little bit of anaerobic glycolysis. We're going to try to shift those energy systems, right? Now, these types of training are going to be uh, induced very different results, right? Very lean muscle, very bulky muscle, right? Um, and then as we get into this hypertrophy range here, even bulkier muscle, right? So most guys, when they go to the gym, um, you know, them, you've seen them a bunch of times, right? They walk in with that two gallon jug of pink, uh, water that has, you know, some sort of creatine, caffeine, nitric oxide concoction in there, right? They walk in with like that gym bag with the belt hanging out so that all the chicks that are lifting can see that this guy's here to do business, Right. These are the same dudes that like wear Converse or combat boots, right? Like the one stars or the combat boots into like the gym and they have, uh, you know, the, the sleeveless shirts and they're in there grunting and talking to themselves. Uh, that's, that's this range here, right? The meathead range. And, and I, I apologize if any of that is you, um, but there's no denying that there is a subculture of those dudes there and they grunt and. Um, generally they're this, just there to get beach muscles, right? To look big and, um, look mean in the mirror. So, uh, I digress, but anyways, um, we have this continuum here, right? But how do we know what a person can do over here if we don't know what a person can do here? So we always want to start with a type of strength assessment because once we get strength and we get a value here, then we can take a percentage of that one rep max and start applying it to these rep ranges, right? So it's important to start at a one rep max assessment, and then that value can be converted into these different um, training regimens, right? So we would do, let's say if we wanted to do a six to 12 rep range, we'll say this is 70% of one rep max. Okay, and as we go into 12 reps, we'll say this is 60% of one rep max. So if the one rep max is 100 pounds, we, knew, we know here that they have to do 60. And if we wanted to do 15 plus, we'll say that's 40% of your one rep max, right? So then we know that that's 40 pounds because they did a one rep max of 100. Now, these are just random numbers because there is no um, certain number range 
to go by because every athlete is going to require different attention and different rep ranges, right? So you just have to know how to manipulate this to control for these, right? So that's why it's really important. So, um, so you know, you understand that you know when people are doing push-ups, they're doing high endurance stuff, right? When people are doing a uh, 400-pound deadlift, they're here, right? If people are doing um, supersets, well, generally they're over here, and then they jump on another machine and they do another high-volume thing, right? So you have to understand how these things are used in the gym, what metabolic pathways that they promote, and what the adaptations are, right? Um, so let's move on. So when we do a one rep max, um, we are measuring the basic, the isotonic muscle strength. So what is isotonic? Basically the contraction, it is a eccentric and concentric contraction in, in conjunction, right? So it is a full range of motion that a group of muscles can go through um, where we have a concentric phase and an eccentric phase, okay? Now, generally, when we do a one rep max, we're not thinking of functional fitness. Yes, we can do a functional assessment. I, I, I actually do that a lot with the MMA fighters um, where I will get a gauge or a measurement of their strength, but then I'll also run through functional assessments to see um, if I wanted them to do a deadlift and carry that weight through a range of motion, I would have them do a deadlift, and once they are, uh, that weight is off the ground, I would have them take three steps forward, bring the weight down, pick it back up, take three steps backwards, right? Because that sort of functional movement is going to be very different than just standing still and doing a deadlift. They will not be able to put up the same amount of weight because now we're moving the body through a range of motion. So um, I'll take multiple assessments just to see where they are with static strength, which means they're just laying down on a bench and pressing strength and pressing weight. And then I'll do one with functional strength where I'll have them do a movement and move them through um, through a space. Okay, so. We can do many different uh, ways of assessing. This one is super, super popular. This one is super, super popular. This one is super po popular, right? If we wanted to do kind of like a power assessment, we could also do power cleans. Um, we would do that for more elite athletes. We would not do that with someone that is starting or a fair weather individual, um, which is what CrossFit does. And that's why CrossFit gets such a horrible, horrible rep because um, and I don't mean rep as in reps and sets. I mean reputation because they are putting novices through, um, I'm sorry, they are putting beginners uh, through very, very complex movements and having them do it for long periods of time, which is causing injury, causing unnecessary damage to tissue, and exhausting them metabolically. Um, so there, but like I said, there's there's so many other ways we can do this. And, and you know, when you do a one rep max, it's, it's entirely up to you what you want to measure. Uh, my my opinion is, uh, my expert opinion is do several assessments, right? Do all of these assessments. Now, you can't do them on the same day, right? Because if they did a squat and a deadlift on the same day, that, that would not be a true measure of strength because you would be fatigued on one from one and then go do the other one and not get an accurate measurement. But if you wanted to do squat assessment one week, let some time go by and do, do a deadlift assessment the next week, um, I think it's it's always valuable to to get as much possible information as you can. Now, when you get to the smaller muscle groups like biceps and um, you know um, leg extension, leg curls, you're not activating as many muscle groups, so you're going to get a completely different result. But there's nothing wrong with taking those assessments. The more assessments you have, uh, the more thorough you are. Okay, so that is basically the gist of what we're doing. So we're measuring the maximum force production in an isotonic muscle contraction, okay? Now, um, if we were in the lab, what we would be doing is uh, I would have you guys running through a series of one rep maxes, okay? The biggest problem with a one rep max test is preparation. And I am uploading a video for you guys uh, that I found on YouTube. And it was uh, some trainers that said uh, they are doing the American College of Sports Medicine one rep max assessment and they shot a video and it's filled with errors. It's filled with mistakes. It's it's lacking a tremendous amount of explanation. And this week's drill is going to be you guys uh, essentially telling me where the mistakes are. 
Um, I'm going to have you guys go through my method and then I'm going to have you watch their method. And I want you to see the difference in, in, in methodology, but also explanation, right? That's why you guys are writing these discussion uh, boards on these discussion boards because I need you to explain. I need your brain thinking about how you explain this information because when you go for a job interview, let's say you get uh, let's say you get into the final selection of the Chicago um, Cubs strength and conditioning coach assistant coach position. You fly out to Chicago, uh, the wonderful city that it is, um, and you meet with the head strength and conditioning coach and they interview you. And they ask you, hey man, um, you know, tell me, tell me what your theory is on one rep max, and uh, how do you base endurance testing on one rep max? And do you think a baseball player needs to train in strength, or do they need to train in endurance, or somewhere in between? And then they say go, and they point at you. You better be able to speak articulately enough to say, these are my feelings, this is my rationale, and this is how I would apply it to your team. And if you can't. They're going to hire the guy or the gal that can do that, okay? So um, I want you to be able to um, explain to me the major differences between what I'm presenting to you and what was presented on that video. So so generally when we do a one rep max, we, we will use a bench press. Oops, sorry about that. Let me go back. We will use a bench press. We will also use a squat. Now, um, if we're doing novice... Uh, uh, I'm going to use the word beginner. If we're using beginners and we're trying to get their one rep max, is there a better way to do the leg portion? We always want to do the upper body and we always want to do the lower body. And generally we can do those in the same day because we're, we're recruiting different muscle groups. Okay. Um, because here, as you can see, this person is laying on a bench. There's artificial support. There's very little activation of the legs. There's some activation of the core. The glutes are completely smashed and we're creating some power in the floor, um, but it's not enough to exhaust us to carry forward and move into a lower body assessment, okay? So um, when we do this assessment, do I just throw them on the bench and I say, hey, dude, how much do you think you can lift? And they say, oh, you know, I put up 235 before and I say, okay, 235 it is. And I throw 235 pounds on there. Is that how I do it? Or do I have to warm them up to that? And if I do warm them up to that, what they think they can do, how do I do it? All right. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And that's where some of the holes are in the video that you guys are going to watch. Um, so we have to make sure that we are preparing the body, but also most importantly, preparing the neurons, right? The neurons are what send the signal for the muscle to contract. And they are a part of this process. So we don't want to just activate the muscles. We want to activate the neurons. We want to activate the communication between the efferent and neurons um, and the information going to and from the brain and back to the muscle, right? There's a lot of components involved in this process. We want to make sure that we're turning them all on and we're warming them all up, okay? So um, let's talk a little bit about how we're going to do that and why we do that. So here is my procedure, and my procedure has a little bit of ACSM and, and just a little bit of NSCA because I've been doing this a long time. I've worked with a lot of athletes, professional and amateur, and this is the way that just kind of works for me. So most of this is from ACSM. So um, let's look at this just one by one. The participant should perform a warm-up with a self-selected load, okay? Now that warm-up will be a minimum of five to 10 reps, okay? And that, that self-selected load will be approximately 50% of your predicted one rep max. So again, if I say, hey man, when was the last time you did a one rep max? Oh, you know, a year ago. Okay, how much did you put up? Oh, I think I put up 200. Okay, so 50% of your predicted one rep max would be 100. And I could even be cautious because it was a year ago and I can say, okay, we're gonna do... 40% of that one rep max, right? So I'm going to put on, you know, 85 pounds. We put on that 85 pounds and then we say, okay, whenever you're ready, go ahead and do five to 10 reps. Why five to 10 reps? Well, because if they get five and they're struggling, that tells me that that prediction is not accurate, right? That tells me that we're not going to get close to that 200 
um, because they're struggling with five reps of their 50% predicted one rep max. Now, if that five reps goes up super easy and they get right to 10, we know that their self-predicted max is pretty close, right? We know that, okay, they did 10 effortlessly. Um, we can move the weight up differently to try to get to that one rep max sooner. And that will make more sense in a moment, okay? So as a trainer, we're using this rep range to determine if they're struggling or if this is a piece of cake, right? Struggle, oh, I'm barely getting to five they're starting to arch their hips, they're starting to get more of their back involved, or this is a piece of cake, I just put up 10, no problem whatsoever. Then I want you to rest for a minute. Why do we rest for a minute? Well, if we think about that energy system, we think if they did five to 10 reps, right? Let's go back, they did five to 10 reps, they're somewhere in here, right? What energy systems are they depleting? They're depleting the ATP PC cycle. So if we give them one minute to rest, that should be enough time to replenish that cycle because we know during that one minute rest, creatine kinase is finding all the ATP it can. It's taking the phosphates, or I'm sorry, ADP. It's putting the phosphates back onto the ATP, right? And it's helping generate those ATP pools again, right? So we give that one minute rest to let creatine kinase uh, do its job we let creatine and phosphates rebind together, right? And we're letting these energy systems restore themselves, all right? So that's why we're taking that one minute rest. Now, once they've conducted that, we are going to select a weight based upon the previous effort, right? So what they did up here, and we're gonna perform three to five reps at approximately 80% of that predicted one rep max. So now what you can do, is you can either take their predicted max up here. If they said, okay, I can do 200 pounds one time. And you said, okay, let's do our 50% max. Okay. And you did 50% of 200 is 100 pounds. And you said, okay, whenever you're ready, I'm going to spot you. You go and they go and they got 10 easy. Okay. No problem. Okay. So now we're going to decrease the rep range because we don't want to wear them out. We don't want to do 10 again right? We're warming up the body. We're letting the, the neurons communicate with the muscle. We're letting the neurons communicate with the brain. We're letting those signals flow back and forth, right? We're warming up the entire system. And now we're going to say, okay, now we're going to move up to 80% of 200 pounds. Okay. And uh, we do that, right? So we move up to that 80% and we ask them to do three to five reps. Okay. So this is just here to kind of say, okay, you know, we can add 10 to 20 pounds to the lower body or 30 to 40 pounds to the upper body. It, it, we, we kind of play with the weight a little bit, all right? And this is where you as a trainer, you have to read the language of the person you're training. Are they, oh geez, I'm sorry. Are they struggling or is it a piece of cake? Are they breathing? Are they exhaling? Are they talking right when they're done or are they trying to, get, are they trying to catch their breath, right? This, ladies and gentlemen, is just a template to help you. But between these sets and uh, between these sets and these reps, you are the calculator. You have to make the decisions to get them to the one rep max. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a high school where they have hired hired me to do some consulting, and I watch the um, I watch the wrestling coach basically throw their wrestlings, uh, wrestlers on a bench and say, okay, what do you think you can do? Let's go get it up. And they, they try to do this one rep max one time. And then they're like, okay, next guy. Um, they, they don't understand the physiology, right? So we start at 50. Ideally, you might have to do some plus or minus there. You might have to go to 40. You might have to go 30. Um, I wouldn't exceed 50. I would start there, right? Then we move up to 80. Right? We move up to 80% of that predicted weight or we move up to 80% of what you chose here. Right, So if they said they're doing 100 pounds, so if they said I can max out at 100 and you said, oh, I don't believe you, I'm going to do 30% of your one rep max. Okay, so that'd be 30 pounds, right? Uh, and they did that, let's say they did that pretty easily. And then you want to jump up to 80%. You say, okay, well, 80% of 100 pounds is 80 pounds. I'm, I'm going to move up to that, right? And then I'm going to let you do three to five reps, right? So if I do three to five reps, again, this is the basement. This is the ceiling. Was it tough for them? 
or was it a piece of cake for them, right? So when you guys were kids, you probably read those books, right? Choose your own adventure. That's the same thing that's happening here. You're, you're letting them perform a series of, of, of reps and sets, and then you're calculating and choosing what they'll do next based upon that previous one, right? So now um, we rest again for two to five minutes. Why two to five minutes? Because we want to let the muscles recover more because now we're closer to that 100%. We're closer to getting to that one rep max. So we want to make sure we have complete recovery. Now, if they're breathing heavy, give them the five. If this 80% was a piece of cake, give them the two, right? There's no reason to rush this. If they want four minutes, if they want five minutes, give it to them. Okay. So now after we get done with the 50 and the 80 and the rest, now we're trying to get them to that one rep max because we don't want to keep having them do set after set after set. We want to get to that one rep max and be done because the more we interfere, the more we're going to wear them out and the more they're going to struggle with this process. Okay. So now we can increase the load again. Okay. We're going to increase the load. Um, just slightly, right? So are we at 80%? What should we do? Was that a piece of cake? Was that tough for them? So now we can we can start adding different weight, okay? And try to get them to that one rep max, okay? So let's say we're at 80%. Did they struggle? Yes. Okay, so let's go 90% of their one rep max, right? Let's let's just keep it under that 100 that 100% ceiling. So on this one, I can say, okay, let's do um, eight, 90% of your one rep max. So again, we started with 200. Remember this person over here told us two, they can max out at 200 pounds. Here we did 100 pounds. They did it easily. Here we did a 180 pounds. They did it easy. Here, if they did it easy, we're going to move up and try to get the one rep max here. We're going to try to meet that uh, 200 pounds. If they didn't do it easily here, we're going to move up to 90% of their predicted one rep max. Okay. So then we'll say, okay, let's try 190. Okay. They do 190 and they just press it one time. Okay. If that was a piece of cake, we let them rest. Okay. Give them that rest period again. And then we do it again. We try to get to that uh, 100% of that one rep max again, right? So we slowly try to get them to their predicted one rep max. Now their predicted one rep max could be completely inaccurate. And that's where you have to be the expert at this, right? So most importantly, we want to keep this between three and seven attempts. And I disagree with the seven because I've done this a hundred times. I think the seven is high I like to keep it between three and six. And if it's not seven, I can, I can get all the information that I need from six. Um, but I just want you to see how this, how we slowly one, two, three, right? Four. And if they're still going strong, you can go to five, add some more weight, right? And that weight might exceed their predicted one rep max, right? So here, if we did it again, they might be at 210 pounds. So now they're exceeding what they predicted at their one rep max, but we did this in a safe, regimented, scientific manner. Okay, so that's kind of like the long drawn out version of it. So then we're going to score it, right? So we can get a score to see where these people are um, when it comes to um, where they can, where they score with others, right? So if we want to know their maximum strength in kilograms, right, it's basically their total weight lifted, right? So if they did 100 pounds, we would divide that by 2.2, right? Because there's 2.2 kilograms in one pound, right? And that would tell us how many kilograms. Um, but basically, we have the maximum strength. Okay, I did 220 pounds. Okay, so take 220 divided by 2.2, then we have the value of pounds and kilograms. That is their maximum strength. But if we wanted to make it relative to see how they, where they are on the continuum of other people that are own weight, then we would take the kilograms and we would divide it by their body weight, right? So how much did they lift divided by their body weight in kilograms, right? And then we will get a value like this that will tell us where they are on the strength continuum, right? Some people are very poor, some people are very high, but that's how we make it relative to their body mass, okay? So um, we have maximal strength, which is absolute, and then we have relative where we take their body mass divide their maximum output by their body mass and we get this relative strength, right? Um, 
and that's important. We'll talk about that a little more in class later. So that's basically all I have for you. So now I'm going to walk you through um, a couple of things here. So let me get this guy out of here. Let's just cancel. It. See you later. And let's move to this. Okay. So I had some questions about where things are. So let me walk you through this. Okay. So your discussion for this week is going to be right here, right? So you're going to find that discussion board. You're going to click it. Okay. You can see that, where did it go? Because I just put it up. Here it is right here. Here's what we did previously last week, right? Here's your new lab right here. All right. So I went to discussion. Here it is. It's not green yet because I didn't make it active. But if I click on it, right, I have a very well-written um, assignment for you. All right. So you guys can read this at your own time. Notice that it is 20 points. And again, notice that you are on your own in this week's discussion. You only need to make one incredible response. You do not, re you do not need to respond to, a, respond to another student's uh, post this time. Okay. So this is up here in the discussion section. Okay. So um, we're not doing pin discussions. We're not doing comments. Here's, here's where we are. All right. Now, when you go to modules this week, I'm going to go to modules. Okay. Here is what I uploaded for you. Here is chapter 3C. All right. This is my video. And this is the uh, PowerPoint for that video. All right. And that is basically starting to get us into glycolysis. You guys probably haven't watched it yet. Um, getting us a little more into the process of glycolysis, some of the byproducts and such. Okay. Now, here is your lab and discussion portions. Okay. Okay. Here is the video I want you to watch. You will click this. You will watch it. This is the video that was conducted by some students that said we're doing an ACSM one rep max test. Uh, the procedure was there, but they're missing a ton of information. Okay. So I want you in your post to consider what information they're missing based upon the PowerPoint that I just gave to you guys, right? That I just presented to you, to you guys. Now, I've also provided some things that I would have given you in the lab if we were in class, okay? So this is the one rep max test sheet, okay? So if we were in the class right now, this would be the sheet that I would give you and we would test one another on one rep max and we would use kind of that uh, layout that I had provided for you in the lecture. So let's take a look at this sheet and look, look at it and then we can kind of use this to further um, evaluate and break down some of the mistakes uh, on that that video, um, this video right here that I'm giving you guys. So let's look at this one rep max sheet and we'll go through this um, so you can see the detail. Here we go and there it is. Okay, so um, one rep max worksheet. So we would put the participant's name, the dates, uh, gender, age, and height. Gender, age, and height is important. Um, and then we would have body weight in pounds, and then we would convert that body weight into kilograms. So we would take um, pounds and divide it by 2.2, and that's what would give us uh, kilograms. So uh, it's important to have both of those, and it's important to know both of those uh, because some calculations will require um, a kilogram representation of body weight. Now, if we look at the next section here, you can see that I have bench one rep max estimate in pounds, okay? And then leg press, one rep max estimate in pounds. So it's okay to do upper body and lower body in the same day. Uh, it's not okay to do upper body and upper body, right? It's also not okay to do upper body and then whole body, right? So if you did something like um, a deadlift, you would not want to do a leg press on that day. Um, and, you know, if you did a heavy bench, that could potentially impact energy systems uh, for a deadlift. So you, you really want to make sure that you um, kind of separate the body uh, portions uh, by strength measurements. So you don't want to do two of the same measurements in the same day. Now, um, if we look over here to the right, we can see that I put that 50% estimate. So if my client or my partner in the, the lab was to say, yeah, I think I can bench 100 pounds. And I said, okay, that's great. 50% of that would be 
50 pounds, 80% of that would be 80 pounds, right? So I'm already giving that 50 and 80% estimate so that I know the margins that I'm working in. Same thing with the bench press or leg press, right? If he says, oh, I can only do 100 pounds. Okay, no problem, 100 pounds, uh, 50 pounds uh, for their first attempt, 80 pounds for their next attempt, and then we will start to kind of fine tune that as we see how capable they are in these rep ranges, okay? So if we identify this information immediately, take a look at this, we can just plug it in right here, okay? We can plug it in right here, right? So 50 pounds, 50 pounds. Now, I also put the rep, the rep range and the rest time, right? So we know that on that first set, they're going to do 50% of their estimated one rep max. We identified that here, and they're gonna do between five and 10 reps, right? Again, this is the basement, this is the ceiling. So how well are they doing that? Are they struggling and they can only get five? Are they smashing it and they can get 10? Or they're somewhere in between, right? And that's going to have a direct impact on this next set that we do, right? We, we might see that they absolutely smash that and then we might want to increase this here, right? We might want to say, okay, well, that that was that was pretty easy. Let's do 90% of their extra ex, uh, estimated one rep max, right? So again, this is your job as a trainer and as somebody that is trying to master physiology, exercise physiology and performance, you're going to make these fine tuning um, decisions and make these calculations in real time because we don't want to exhaust the athlete uh, during this process, we got to be very, very um, uh, precise. Now, I also have another column here. What does this mean here? RPE. If you guys haven't seen that before, uh, Borg's rate perceived rate of perceived exertion one through ten. This is them telling me, okay, man, you just did ten reps. How did that feel? And if they say, okay, that was a 10, that means that they were struggling, right? Or if they said that was a one, that means it was really easy, right? So this is kind of your way to reinforce your own decisions to alter weight as you go up, right? So we know the 50% estimated max. We have a, a basement and a ceiling here. We have five to 10 reps. We're going to give them that one to two minute rest. And then we're going to say, hey, man, how did that feel? And they say, oh, it was really, really easy. Okay, so then you put a one or you put a two here, right? And that supports, there's all this information here that supports your um, ability to manipulate this weight here. So maybe if it was so easy, they just underestimated, right? Here they underestimated their one rep max. We can say, okay, you know, we're going to add a little more weight. Let's let's try to do a 90% of your estimation and put 90 pounds on rather than 80 pounds, right? And then you do the exact same thing. So you make that you make that slight adjustment here, and you say, okay, let's let's put up this weight, 90 pounds. This time, I want you to do three to five reps. We're going to take a two to five minute break, okay? And again, here's your basement, here's your ceiling. If they struggled, that's going to impact what you do on this next incremental adjustment. If they smash it and it was a piece of cake, that's going to impact how much weight you add on this next incremental adjustment. So if it's if it's a struggle, it's gonna be lower weight. If it was a piece of cake, it's gonna be higher weight, right? And since we're kind of figuring them out in between these ranges here, we're gonna add this extra two to five minute rest again, right? Same thing with the leg press, exact same process, right? So. Now, after this second one, <clears throat> pardon me, we say, okay, what was your rate of perceived exertion? And they say, okay, that, that was pretty easy. Okay, you said, okay, well, what, what do you mean by easy? One, two, three, and they say, well, it was a four. So then you say, okay, it was a four, so um, it wasn't incredibly easy, but they, they did it with little difficulty, so maybe I'll just adjust the weight and 10 pounds. I'll do another 10 pounds, okay? So this is how we kind of fine tune that one rep max. And we can go, you know, we'll do it here, same process, make an incremental adjustment, do it here, right? Same process, incremental adjustment, do it here. And then um, we want to ultimately identify what is the final one rep max on bench? What is the final one rep max on leg press, okay? And then we can convert that to relative strength, right? So we take the weight in kilograms, we, um, Divide, that should be division. That's a that's wrong. That should be a divide sign. So I'm, I apologize for that typo because that looks like time, but here it says divide. So um, that should be division. So total weight lifted divided by body mass. That gives us our 
relative bench strength. Same thing with leg press. We take uh, leg press, total weight in kilograms, divided by our body weight, and we get our relative strength. Okay, so that's it. So um, I want you to look at this paper, and I want you to look at how um, detailed and how precise I am compared to what you see on that video, right? Because, um, and again, I want you to identify what we would do right in the lab opposed to what that video did um, in their presentation, okay? So that is that sheet. Let's go back one more time. So I'm gonna go back to modules, right? Here we go. I'm gonna go back to chapter 3C, okay? So here's the video you're gonna watch. Here's the worksheet we just looked at. Here is a cheat sheet, okay? So um, if for some reason this video and my lecture uh, did not help you, then I created this cheat sheet that basically tells you what we do and the procedures we do, okay? It's all right here. You can look at that and you can kind of uh, read it, right? And I have all this information here um, that, and we're gonna talk about muscle endurance a little later. We're not gonna do it right right now. We're just kind of talking about strength. Um, here is the procedure. Here's the scoring. Here's the pretest. okay? The equipment that you need, okay? Here's the process. So uh, you have everything you need to really kind of decipher how good or bad that video is uh, that we that you're going to watch okay so the cheat sheet is there let's go back now the last thing you're going to do for this lab discussion is you are going to go here how does warm-up impact strength you're going to open this up here is a very very short article okay look at one two three and then you got your references very very short i want you to read this and i want you to see how warming up prior to a strength test impacts strength test you can see here we're talking about one rep max again okay very short um just a couple of graphs here right um i want you to kind of fold this information into your response as well okay um so and then there is no right or wrong answer, right? You guys, what I'm doing here is I'm making you think critically, right? I'm showing you what's out there on uh, on the internet, right? What a lot of people are doing is they're just like people that don't go to school for kinesiology. They're, they're just looking on YouTube and they're saying, oh, I'm going to watch some videos on how to do this test. And I'm going to take that test into my business and I'm going to do this on my clients and um you'll see the difference between how some people on youtube are doing it as you watch that video and then you'll see the work that we put in when we're you know dealing with uh, elite athletes you know especially with the the people the the mma fighters that i work with um you have to approach them scientifically e even when it comes to something as simple as a strength test you want to make sure you've dotted all your I's and you've crossed all your T's and you're considering every possible variable you can so you can get the most accurate measurement of strength because we're going to use that measurement as a foundation to build more strength. We're going to use that measurement as a foundation to build power and we're going to use that measurement as a foundation to build endurance and we're going to be doing that all, all different times. So you have to get as accurate as you can with a strength assessment. Okay, that's all I have. Again, um, this assignment, you do not have to respond to anyone else's post. You are just writing me a response telling me what that video did right, if anything, what that video did wrong, if anything, and you're going to use everything that I have given you as support. Um, this paper, uh, the documents that I had given you, the cheat sheet, and um, you know, you can even incorporate information from the PowerPoint. So what I would like to see is you using all these tools to say, hey, here's what that group did right, here's what that group did wrong, and here's why, because I'm using all this evidence that um, Dr. Blackburn had, had given me. So that is it. Uh, you guys have your exam next week, and I will be in touch. Take care.